Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And today we're going to be talking about the viscera, the organs and what Tracy does when she has to treat them in the mortuary. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm as well as I was two minutes ago when we recorded the last video. Yeah, I'm probably flagging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's make this our last one for today. <laughs> Tracy's had a big night out. Woohoo! Uh, for her wedding anniversary, congratulations! Yay! How many years? 18. 18 years! <gasps> wow, yeah. that's an achievement. It is. In yeah. this modern world. In this modern world, yes. Well done, that's you. Good, well yes. done, you and your lovely husband. Yes, he's wonderful. Okay. What are we talking about today? The viscera. The viscera, yes. So we've had a heap of questions lately about um, the viscera, the organs, and people asking why you would clean them, do you embalm them individually, why you don't just throw them out, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's start at the very beginning and explain the context around why you would do anything with organs um, is when a body comes back to you after an autopsy. Yes. With the coroners away, yeah, yeah. comes back to you and they come to you with the organs all in a bag mm -hmm. inside the cavity in here yeah. and sutured up with a Y suture. Yes, right? that's right. And so in every case, do you then have to take them out and clean them or do you only do that when there's going to be an embalm for a particular reason? Right. So if we're embalming, we have to remove them. Mm-hmm. We have to remove the viscera because we need access into the cavity because that's where we're going to embalm from because we can't do the normal embalming through the carotid because I can hear Chili walking up. It's my dog upstairs, sorry. <laughs> so, hey, little footsteps, that's cute. Because um, obviously everything's being eviscerated, all the organs have been cut away inside, so we've now got no ves we've, the vessels aren't like, connected anymore. So we can't just do the normal into the carotid and blood out the jugular. So we need to get the viscera out of the cavity because we need to go in this way to embalm the legs and the arms and the head. So once again, this is only done after an autopsy has been performed for the purpose of, of nutting out the cause of death. Yes. And yes. the timing around the death and that sort of thing. Yes. When it's been ordered by the courts... It's yep. a legal situation that's away from where Tracy works. She doesn't do the I do autopsies. I do not do autopsies. <laughs> I do not do autopsies. So the body will come back after that's all finished. The organs will have been sampled by the pathologist. That's so right. slices may have been taken. Some yep. of them will be cut up into pieces, that sort of thing. Yes. All placed in the bag. All placed in the cavity. Yep. All sewed up. Yes, yes. Just so you know. Yeah, and, and we've done a video recently on it, and but people are asking this question again, why are you doing all of that work so yes we have to take the organs out so during embalming I'll take the organs out and we have to clean them okay and the reason we have to clean the organs is I'll rinse the organs uh, it basically I've got a big colander like a colander uh, kind of uh, implement where as I take the organs out I put it in here and rinse it through the water I just need to rinse the organs out but the most important thing I need to do is clean out all the um, intestines and get everything out of the intestines and the bowel area. So basically I've got to get rid of any food that may be in there and also get rid of all the feces, the poo, everything has to come out because poo and vomit's not going to embalm and we can't preserve that. We need to get rid of it because that's going to be really bad smell and also by the rinsing is we're rinsing the blood off as well we're getting rid of a lot of the blood you know all the organs have blood inside them you know but we're cleaning the outside because blood decomposes first and it and you know bad blood smells bad so we've got to we've got to clean the organs otherwise if i just took the bag out and put it to one side, then popped it back in once I've embalmed the body. We've embalmed the body, but we haven't done anything with this. This is going to decompose and, what? and it'll smell very fast because it's the bacteria is rampant in this bag that's been, you know, opened up by the, the pathologist doing their autopsy and put back in. So the reason is we'll clean it, we'll rinse it. And once I've gotten rid of all of the, the feces or anything that's inside, I then have a big container <clears throat> with another bag in the container where it's full of uh, cavity fluid where them organs will sit in there and that's what's embalming the organs so it's sitting in this instrument um, basically a big container being embalmed by itself 
in the corner while I'm embalming the body. So I don't embalm every organ individually. It's in the container, sitting in the fluid, and it's sitting a little covered and sealed. Soaking. Soaking. Basically. And so it usually takes you a couple of hours to do the embalm for the, the body, like four hours, five hours, because it's an autopsy case, so it's longer. So in all that time you're working on the body, the organs are sitting over there being embalmed in this solution. So, yes, they get embalmed. I don't do it individually. It's in one go. So by the time I've done all my embalming on the body, I then get um, the, the trocar, which we do the cavity aspirating with, put that, there's a special um, fitting on the trocar, so it's not the same as the one I do the cavity aspirating on a body that's not embalmed, which has a point. This one has a, looks like a little masher, and all it has is little holes to stop the organs going in, but it takes the fluid out, so... And I'll put that into the uh, container with the cavity fluid in, and that'll take all that embalming fluid out. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll take it out, take it out. So then I'm left with organs the organs in a bag. in a bag that are dry. I'll take them out of that bag and put them into How? a clean bag. How do you bag. take them out of the bag? I'll have another container with another bag, and basically I, I put them in. Like yeah. that? Yep. With gloves on? Yeah, yeah, with the full PPE on. And so now I've got a clean bag. I've took it out of the bag where it's been sitting with, because you'll still have a lot of fluid in that bag, even though I've, I've, I've sucked it out with a um, trocar and put it into the, um, the fresh bag where I'll sprinkle autopsy powder. Mm -hmm. Again, that'll absorb a lot of any leftover liquid and fluid. And then I'll seal the bag and then I'll place it into the cavity. And it fits into the cavity where you basically fit it in, the bag's sealed, and then we're going to bring the body back together and do the Y suture again. So it's all done. So that's an embalmed body. Right, so people have asked the question, why don't you just throw those organs out? Yeah, they do ask that. Why don't you throw it out? Well, because it belongs to them. It's part of them. It's part of a human. You know, and it's, you know, and people have cultures and beliefs that they need to take everything with them and, you know, whatever. But I wouldn't just throw bits of a person. person like if into someone the... comes in and their foot's been amputated, you don't just throw the foot in the clinical waste. No, it goes with them. Yeah. yeah. It'll reattach it if I can and it'll go with them. Or if not, it'll be cleaned and sealed and put into the coffin. It will not be put into the clinical waste. Everything goes back with the deceased. Everything stays with the deceased. And even though the brain, after an autopsy, doesn't get put back in the skull because it's too difficult, it turns to jelly, yeah. it goes into that bag it's as well, bag. doesn't it? Yeah, it's in the bag. So it's, all the organs are in the bag, the brain, everything. So that's why we need to clean and embalm the uh, viscera for viewings or service or anything and put it back, one, because we need it to stay with the deceased. But then you've got the ones where... Uh, we're not embalming the right, body. so they come back from their autopsy, they've still got the bag, they've still got the Y suture, all of that's going on, but you're not going to embalm because they're not going home, they're not yep. being repatriated to another country, they're not going in an above-ground vault or crypt. Yeah. And um, so there's no reason that you need to keep and hold the body preserved for any length of time. So that's they're just right. going to have a funeral tomorrow yep. or in the next day. Yeah. So what do you do with them? So what I do with them is if the... Bodies come back from uh, autopsy and that actually the suture's really good. It's very neat, tidy. There's no leaks whatsoever. There's no smell because you can usually smell if the bag's open and leaked or the, it'll start purging out of the body because um, the fluid's just floating up, you know, and it'll come out of, out of areas so you know that bag's leaking and smelling. So if it's all clean and I've got no leaks and no smell, I won't open there's no reason for me to open because it's already been, you know, well cared for at, at autopsy. Whoever the mortician technician that put that person back together has done a really good job. So why do I need to then traumatise the body again and open up? And, you know, I don't need to do that. So you don't do things for no reason? No, no, I have to have a reason. I don't mm -hmm. just go, yeah, let's just get it out there. But if they've come back and they're not being embalmed and they are going out tomorrow but the leaking everywhere, there's blood coming out everywhere and there's leaking and the head post is leaking, then I will open it up because it's just leaked everywhere. So I will rinse 
I won't embalm, I'll rinse and clean and rinse and clean. I, I mean, I, um, I sometimes have put them in a, a container of cavity fluid just while I've cleaned the inside out and all of that. And make sure everything's clean. Clean out the, you know, any food or any feces, clean it all out. And then put it in a clean bag, put the viscera back in the clean bag, the autopsy powder back inside, autopsy powder all over and then seal again. And, and that stops the leaks. And it just stops the leaks and stops the smell. So, you know, so it's got to be sealed because blood smells really bad when it's decomposing. It's really, really a nasty smell. So if I don't need to do the extent of work like that and everything's clean and nice and good job, I don't. But when I do, I do. And we always put the organs back. And the reason we clean them is so we don't have that smell and we've got um, the person, you know, preserved long enough for the service to happen or the viewing to happen you know you know what I thought of when you were just saying about that the second option where you were cleaning and just Mm -hmm. putting them back in and you weren't embalming I was thinking it's like when you're sick and you go and have a shower and put on a clean pair of jammies and hop into a clean bed yeah makes you feel better well that's right and it does (laughs) and it it actually makes me feel better as well because you know they come in there's leaks and you go oh and it always makes you feel better when they're clean and, and the, the family smell can nice. then, you know, have a viewing or they mm-hmm. can touch their person. You don't yeah. have to worry that, oh, there's going to be a trickle of blood here and that's going to look yeah. bad. And all yeah. that, you know that the family can have a distress-free, as yeah. much as possible, viewing and farewell. Yeah. Hmm. And another thing I've never mentioned as well that uh, I only remembered because sometimes I do it, not often, but I do do it, is um, what we do with dry pack because that's a wet pack. Right. The bag is a wet pack. Right. We can do a dry pack viscera where it doesn't go in the bag. Right. It goes into like a net, like, you know, like yeah. a net where you put yeah. your laundry. Yeah. Like a net. Like yeah, yeah. We'll put the viscera in there. Yeah. So basically embalming in a container in a bag while it's yeah, been yeah. embalmed. Uh, get rid of all of the uh, cavity fluid it's um, been embalmed with. Um, take them organs out into a clean container where the basically there's no bag in it was just in a container put the organs in and then get the net bag inside the cavity and put the organs in mm-hmm. to this bag right so just for the lay people and me we're like so what's the difference we don't like it's not a big deal it's just for you it's a different bag you have to grab but why yeah well this is what we call a dry pack so it has to be dry but my question to you is why what would you choose a dry pack over a wet pack for um one you've got less chance of leaking if the bag bursts because it's in dried. a what? in a dry pack in a dry pack because right. you have to dry it and then you have to cover the organs in the uh, autopsy powder right and you've got to really make sure you're covered and everything don't you has dry to be the dry. organs in the bag as well in yeah the you, black bag? you do but sometimes there's still as it's in the bag it can sometimes still because the organs have got blood inside them as well you can have leakage and you'll not get it totally clean unless you're patting every bit right. down so, so how do you get it totally clean for the dry pack well it's not it's still that's why you've got to use the autopsy powder why would you use a dry pack over a wet pack uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different technique and a lot of morticians prefer dry pack to a wet pack yeah um, so it might just be to do with the equipment that you're given to work with yeah or how you're trained Oh, okay, you know, cool. And a lot of people are trained in dry packs and, and I was trained in wet packs and I prefer the bag as to the... Because I still find, even though you're doing the dry pack with or, as much autopsy powder as you put in, I still find it leaks a bit more than you have when you've got something sealed. Yeah. You know, when you're totally sealed, it, the chances of it leaking is a lot less than when it's in a, a net bag, which obviously is not sealed. Right, so that black bag that mm-hmm. you've shown us before... Um, how do you seal it? Uh, basically tie it. So once the organs are in and it's in the cavity, you know, and you've got it, because you've got to flatten the organs out in through the bag so it fits into the cavity because you don't want a lump yeah. here because no. when you suture it, you're going to have this big lump. You've got to yeah. have it so it fits flat. into the whole cavity area so it's all nice and flat and, you know, you've got that nice so you can get your suture back together. Um, I've got a question. <laughs> how do you seal it how do i seal it yeah that's right i forgot it too <laughs> i was like oh my god oh i've obviously gone on too much uh, so once it's all in there it's all sealed powder's on and then just basically tie it right and tie it and then tie it again and sometimes i'll put um like 
you know, like hairband things around yeah. to tie it tight. Yeah, so just to tie Okay, so it's not it like sealed, sealed. It's not airtight or anything like oh, that. No, no, okay. but you have to get the air out so you haven't yeah. got a bag full of air. So you basically, and I don't vacuum seal it or anything no. like that. So, okay. and, and, it, and you've got the little nut on the top area, so it's not going to leak out yep. down the back. So, yep. so you're using so, gravity to your advantage yeah. there. Yeah, so everything's okay. sealed. Interesting. So, yeah. so there you go. You don't just throw them out. Yeah, but never throw anything out that belongs to a person. Because yeah. you wouldn't want to know that that had happened to part of your loved one, would you? Yeah, no. Find no. out later on that, oh, their heart and their liver weren't buried with them. That's right, yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't want to do that. So. That's not nice. And, you know, I've never... <laughs> I've never you just it's just not a thing you just it belongs to them it's theirs and it you know I, I just wouldn't feel right putting it in the bin that's no. just it's not how we work you know and that's how we train to do that and the reason is because we keep all the organs with the person and just make sure everything's there and uh clean sealed in the look lovely and clean fresh yeah yeah that's nice fresh. it's nice to see them nice and clean and settled and peaceful and in that so yeah so hopefully that answers all the questions from the last video where you were talking about all of the why do you need to do that and all of that so the good questions so yeah thank you for really sharing good. yeah thank you thank you thanks guys yes until next time yes see ya bye